Morning. In this video, we want to talk about the water potential. In fact, uh, we are interested in uh, transpiration, which is the movement of water from the soil into the plant. Then the water has to leave the plant via the leaves. We want to find out how water actually is able to move. This is the reason why we have to talk about the uh, water potential. Because uh, water potential is going to enable us to understand why water is the capacity to move from the soil into the plant. So I am going to make a presentation on uh, water potential. Thereafter, I will talk about the uh, transpiration and also the factors that affect uh, transpiration. I may also talk about the uh, stomata. That is the uh, outlet for water from the plant. So let me uh, show you the, the, the presentation. Okay, water potential. Uh, water potential is typically expressed in potential energy per unit volume and very often represented by the Greek letter psi. Many different factors may affect the total water potential and the sum of these potentials determines the overall water potential and the direction of water flow. Here I've got uh, uh, an expression which shows water potential, uh, which is represented by this uh, psi. Now, water potential is equal to psi pi plus psi p plus psi m. So, Psi pi is representing the solute potential and psi p is representing the pressure potential. And psi m is representing the matrix uh, potential. Now let us talk of the pressure potential. This can happen when the water has entered the cells. Then there's this outward force or outward pressure, which is exerted from within the cell as a result of entry of water in the cell. This pressure gives the plant the structural uh, rigidity uh, of the cell wall. 
sometimes we call this uh, tega pressure, which is the force exerted outwardly against the cell wall. Here on this uh, diagram, <clears throat> I want to show you the different types of uh, water potential. Here we've got this uh, tubing. The top part is containing a uh, pure water. And this tube on the left, on one side it has got the solution and the other side it has got uh, a pure water. So what is going to happen is that uh, pure water is going to move to the strong solution uh, which we have a perme semi permeable membrane which is dividing the pure water and the solution. So the potential in this column is represented by psi s, uh, representing a solute uh, potential. If we move to the middle tube, if we apply pressure from this end, from the left end, we can force water to move where the arrow is showing, the bottom arrow is showing. Uh, this is the pressure potential, which is positive and is represented by psi P. If we move to the right, we can actually suck from this end and create negative uh, pressure. So water will move according to this uh, direction uh, represented by the psi P. So by reducing pressure here, we're actually forcing water to move in this uh, direction. Probably this may also uh, give us a clear picture about the components of uh, water potential. Now I'm going to explain uh, osmotic potential. Now, osmotic potential is a result of the presence of the solute in a solution. Solute attract water molecules and it reduces the ability of water to move out of the plant cell. So this could be represented by psi pi or psi s to represent the solute uh, potential. Here I've got a diagram which shows or which demonstrates uh, osmosis. We have got uh, two things on this diagram. To the left, we have got a solution. To the right, we have got a pure water. In the middle, we have got a, a semi-permeable uh, membrane. So what is going to happen is that uh, water will move from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration via the semi-permeable membrane. Uh, later on, I will talk about the process of uh, osmosis. Uh, 
other potential is the matrix potential. This is the result of uh, water being absorbed to solid surfaces. There are adhesive intermolecular forces between water and the solid matrix. Charged surfaces within the cell attract water molecules and also create the matrix uh, potential. So I have now defined all of the components of uh, uh, water potential <coughs> which were represented in this uh, equation. So yes, this is the equation where we say the water potential is equal to the solute potential plus pressure potential plus matrix uh, potential. I just want to talk about Tega pressure. Uh, this is the force which is exerted outwardly against the cell wall. Now the cell will be described as Tegid. Now a cell wall that experiences water loss uh, we have Tega pressure which becomes zero. The cells are said to be flaccid and the plants uh, wilt. So if there is loss of water from a plant, the cells become uh, flaccid as a result of the loss of uh, water. Uh, we say the cells are losing uh, tega pressure or Ortega pressure is approaching zero. So it is important to note that uh, Tega pressure gives the support to the plants. Incipient plasmolysis, uh, this is where we have the protoplast which just fill the cell volume. So this is the condition uh, which is described as incipient plasmolysis. Here I've got a slide which is showing a uh, take a pressure on the left where we've got water inside a cell vacuole. The cell is staged and we have got uh, these four arrows which are showing the direction of the force. Uh, you can see the plant is quite upright. But where we have uh, the cell which is flaccid. You know, the cell is almost collapsing. In fact, we were saying take it, there is high pressure inside the cell. If it is flaccid, there is low pressure uh, inside the cell. So let us look at the movement of water in and out of the cell. Now, when a cell is surrounded by a hypotonic solution, water will enter the cell. A hypotonic solution represents a concentrated solution. It represents a a dilute solution compared to the cell, to what is in the cell. So let me repeat it again. 
hypotonic solution represents a dilute uh, solution, or it could be pure water, which will enter the cells uh, because the cells have got a concentrated solution. Now, if we have a hypertonic solution, this is a concentrated solution compared to what is inside the cell. So under hypertonic conditions, the cell will lose water. The protoplast will shrink from the cell wall and create a condition known as uh, plasmolysis. That is, if we surround the cell with a concentrated uh, solution or hypertonic solution, uh, it enters a condition known as plasmolysis uh, because it is going to lose water. Uh, this is the wilting condition of plants. We have got three conditions showing water movements in the cell and out, out of the cell. First, let us talk about the hypertonic condition. You can see both arrows, water is getting out of the cell. Uh, that is a plasmolized condition. Now, when we have an isotonic environment, probably the concentrations are more or less the same. We have water going in and out almost at the same rate. And uh, this is actually a flaccid uh, condition. The cytoplasm is just touching the cell wall. When we move to the hypotonic condition, where we have water now entering the plant cells, we have a turgid condition. So the cells are described as uh, turgid. Now, we are going to talk about the transpiration uh, process. This is the actual movement of water from the soil via the roots, stem, and the leaves, and finally into the atmosphere. We have with a picture with a tank of water. Uh, we have a pump which is attached to the bore, which can withdraw water from the bore into this uh, tank. And in the background, we have got trees, which are also doing the same. They are actually having their roots in the soil. They are taking water from the soil and losing it into the atmosphere. Uh, in this case, we don't we don't have a system to collect that water. And uh, what I'm illustrating is that uh, just like what that pump is doing with the drawing water from the soil, the trees in the background are doing the same, but losing the water into the atmosphere. Here we've got these big trees which are getting water from the soil and also uh, losing it into the atmosphere. In the background, you can see a tank where a pump also gets water from the soil and uh, stores it in the tank. So both systems are literally taking water from the soil. We have got a picture 
of uh, a plant to demonstrate water flow in the soil plant atmosphere continuum or movement of water from the soil into the atmosphere. <clears throat> so if we check at the bottom, we've got high water potential. Right at the top, we've got low water potential. So water moves according to this uh, arrow. So we have got root conductance to liquid water flow. We have got stomatal conductance to vapor flow. We have also boundary layer conductance to water vapor flow. Again, here I've got uh, an example of a tree showing the roots which are in contact with the water. The roots get the water into the system. Here I've got the stem uh, showing the xylems or pipes in which the water will flow upwards until it reaches uh, the leaves. Once in the leaves, it may escape via the stomata as vapor into the atmosphere. If you like, we can say at the root level in the soil, we have got a high water potential and in the in the in the leaves and surrounding the leaves we've got a low water potential this is the reason why water is able to flow from roots into the canopy of the tree i've got another diagram here again showing the flow of water from the soil into the roots into the stem, then into the leaves, and finally escapes uh, the leaves into the atmosphere. Uh, the oral process is known as the transpiration. So movement of water into the plant uh, roots. This is what we want to find out. There is high water potential in the soil surrounding the roots. And in the side of the roots, there is low water potential. As a result, water will move into the roots. Uh, the root can concentrate the solution so that water can move into the root. So the roots will build root pressure and eventually we have hydrostatic pressure which is created by the movement of water into the roots. So the roots will move the water to the stem. I just also want to indicate something known as glutation water. This is the water which oozes out of special openings called hydrothodes in the leaves. This can take place uh, during the night when the soil is wet. Here you can see this picture showing the droplets of water on the leaves. Again, another leaf with the droplets of water on the edges. Uh, this is 
quotation water. Now, if we look at the movement of water from the roots to the xylem, it can follow two pathways. The first pathway is known as the simplastic uh, pathway. Water will travel across the living cells. Then we have got the apoplastic pathway when water moves through the non-living system. Uh, this is the xylem vessels. This is the common root. So here I've got a diagram showing the plant cells and the root here, which is projected into the area with uh, water. So because the soil has got a high water potential and the root here, inside the root here in the plant, there's a low water potential. Water will then move into the root here and subsequently into the root. On this diagram, I have got a A picture showing the simplastic pathway through the living uh, cells to the xylem. And also the apoplastic pathway showing the path along the dead uh, cells into the into the right uh, in, into the stem. Now let us talk about the movement of water up the plant. Uh, we have just talked about the movement of water into the root. Water movement is a result of water potential gradient between the root and air boundary layer surrounding the leaves. We have what is known as the soil water continuum which is the continuous system made up of water columns from the roots to the leaves. Here we have cohesive and adhesive forces which move water up the xylem vessels. And the cohesion tension theory or SEP ascent could help us to understand why water moves upstream in the in, in the in the stem of the plant water evaporation in the leaf generates negative uh, pressure Uh, let us focus on adhesion. It also explains uh, why water is moving through the stem. Uh, adhesion is the force between water molecules and the cell walls. Capillary action generated by adhesive forces between water and the wall of the tubes probably also explains why water is moving upwards. Now for capillary action, the distance moved by water is less than one meter. It is not sufficient to explain the movement of water up the leaves for large plants. Maybe for small plants, this is adequate explanation for why water can move uh, through the stem and finally to the leaves. 
Let us focus on the cohesion tension theory. Basically, water, water, uh, water molecules attract each other via hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Uh, this causes tensile strength, osmosis, and evaporation at the top of the trees create negative water potential. The pool extends down the tree trunk and the roots. So osmosis and evaporation will actually pull water through the stem. There is also water meniscus in the leaf in the leaves, which causes uh, tension. So the water column is under tension and it moves upwards. Uh, there's something called embolism. This is the blockage of xylem vessels by air bubbles. I just want to show you the, uh, the water surrounding the cells. Uh, it is actually exacting water tension or this surface tension uh, actually contributes to the pooling of water through the stems. Uh, just imagine there are a lot of leaves uh, with these forces. Uh, if we add them up, it becomes a big force which pulls uh, the water column. A movement of water in the leaf. Water forms a thin layer around the mesophyll cells. Uh, water will evaporate into the air spaces. Then the water exit the plant via leaves by osmosis through the stomata. There is low water potential in the air surrounding the leaf. Uh, this is why it becomes possible for water movement to leave the leaf into the atmosphere via osmosis. This actually pulls water up the xylem vessels. We have got a picture of the leaf, uh, which has got an opening here. The stomata, there are also air spaces where water actually evaporates and fills the air spaces. There will be high water potential inside the air spaces compared to outside. So we expect the water, the, the water vapor to flow out of the leaf into the atmosphere. Now I want to talk about the opening and the closing of the stomata. Uh, we're saying the water vapor will leave the leaf via this opening or via the stomata. Well, the factors which are involved in opening and closing of the stomata are number one, yeah, we've got light. We should also consider the internal water status of the mesophyll cells and also ABA. Now, during the day, uh, here we are now going to look at the stomata behavior. 
what can happen during the day is that uh, in the presence of, of light, we have the accumulation of potassium in the gut cells. Uh, we have ATPs, uh, which facilitate the movement of hydrogen ions out of the gut cells into the surrounding cells. This will allow potassium ions to enter the gut cells. We have ATP, which is converted to ADP to release energy, which is required to move a potassium from the surrounding cells into the gut cells, and also to move the hydrogen ions from the gut cells to the surrounding cells. Inside the gut cells, we have got a mallet and the chlorine ions, which will later combine with the potassium. This is going to lower the water potential. Once the uh, solid potential has been decreased, inside the gut cells. It means the surrounding cells will have a high water potential. Therefore, water will flow from the surrounding cells to the gut cells. The gut cells expand or they become uh, turgid. Once they become turgid, they open. Therefore, water vapor can uh, flow out of these uh, stomata. And carbon dioxide can also enter via the same uh, stomata. During the night, the opposite is going to happen. ATPs will pump potassium out of the gut cells into the surrounding mesophyll. Uh, cells. In opposite potassium, uh, in opposite hydrogen ions will also be pumped into the gut cells to replace the potassium which will be leaving the gut cells. Now we are going to have a the surrounding cells accumulating potassium. And this will lower the water potential. So the gut cells will attain a high water potential. Therefore, water will move from gut cells to the surrounding uh, cells. The gut cells become flaccid and they will close the stomata. This is how the stomata is closed during the night. Here I want to talk about the role which is played by ABA uh, under drought conditions. Now, ABA is produced by the roots, which will sense the dryness in the soil and sends the message in the form of ABA to the leaves. So the ABA will accumulate in the leaves. It will then combine with ATPs and pump the, uh, the, the hydrogen ions into the gut cells and they remove the potassium from the gut cells to the surrounding uh, cells. 
What happens is that uh, the surrounding cells will have a low water potential compared to the gut cells. Therefore, water will move to the surrounding cells. This will cause the gut cells to become flaccid. Once the gut cells are flaccid, the stomata will then close. And this is how the plant can uh, protect itself from loss of water. So the roots will sense the dryness, create ABA and send it to the leaves. The ABA will then promote uh, this closure of the stomata through a series of the chemical uh, reactions. We have got a picture showing the open stomata. You can see potassium going in the gut cells. and also water going in the gut cells because uh, there is low water potential. Here you can see potassium leaving the gut cells and also water leaving the gut cells because there is now a, a high water potential in the gut cells compared to the surrounding cells. Now we can measure the movement of water out from the leaf using uh, parameters which measure stomatal conductance. We have got uh, a parameter. You can see this clip to the leaf. And this is uh, like a computer which reads out the stomatal conductance it is a portable much smaller barometer compared to this heavy one yeah i just want to talk about the now we are summing up uh, this uh, Transpiration, we want to talk about the factors that can affect uh, transpiration. First, we have got temperature. If we increase the temperature, it increases evaporation. This decreases the water potential. And in turn, this can increase the rate of diffusion. Uh, Water molecules will have uh, more kinetic energy. At high temperatures, ABA can also close the stomata, like uh, I have explained previously. And this can reduce uh, transpiration. Uh, Air movement or wind, faster air movement removes the water vapor and it decreases the water potential. This increases transpiration, still air decreases transpiration. Humidity, that is the amount of water vapor in the air. High humidity will slow the transpiration process. Low humidity increase transpiration. A low humidity increases transpiration. Uh, this decreases the water potential above the leaf surface. Light intensity 
light could increase the rate of photosynthesis. This increases the amount of glucose in the leaf gut cells, leading to low water potential. This causes water to enter the gut cells and the stomata to open. Once the stomata are open, this can increase water loss uh, via the stomata. Now we just want to talk about the adaptations of plants uh, in order to control water loss. We have some plants known as the xerophytes with the sanguine stomata. Uh, some plants have thickened and succulent uh, leaves uh, to store water. We also have the presence of the crassulacin acid metabolism, the CAM, where we have stomata which only open at night when they fix carbon dioxide as mallet. The stomata will remain closed during the day to avoid evapotranspiration. Here yeah, are some of the plants uh, which are adapted to the desert, which can minimize water losses. So this cactus also uh, is adapted to dry conditions. These are also other plant with the thick leaves. Uh, we can measure water potential using tensiometers in soils or pressure chambers using uh, plants. This is a tensiometer where you just uh, push this into the soil, this probe. And this is the pressure chamber for measuring uh, water potential. Now, the water potential, if we get the, the numbers, they can tell us probably the status of the plant. For example, uh, if it is too dry, we expect the accumulation of uh, abscisic acid in the leaves. And there are various other things uh, which, which can change uh, inside the plant, which can be monitored as a result of varying uh, water potential. So water potential can tell us the physiological status uh, of the plant. So that's it for plant water relations. So I'll stop here. Okay, so we've just been talking about uh, uh, transpiration. So I will end it here.